Uh, welcome to the Northside Christian Care Team podcast. Uh, we're based on Romans 12 2, Change Your Mind, Change Your Life. This is episode 32, and this is Thursday, April 22nd. Yeah, uh, so glad you guys could join us, and uh, we got a lot to cover today uh, from our event this past Monday, the Creating the Best Summer Ever, uh, where our, our topic was guarding. Uh, and so we just had a lot of really wonderful speakers. We had Grace at 11. Uh, if you notice, the intro music today was a little bit different. That was some. That was a clip of their uh, their music, and we'll have a little bit later on today as well. But before we get started, uh, we are going to um, talk about life hacks. So we're gonna we're gonna talk a little about life hacks and things that uh, are can apply uh, to to your life, or, or maybe it applies to you right now in this season. But uh, but yeah. So Lori, why don't you uh, you want to get kicked off? Okay. So. When you, we talked about life hacks earlier, I thought this is perfect for me because I'm one of those people who works really hard to make things easier later, but I couldn't think of a single one while we were talking about it. And the one I came up with was lame. So here's one that's a little bit less lame. But so I have a teenage boy at my house and if you've ever raised a teenage boy, you know they wear a lot of clothes. There's a lot of laundry <laughs> involved with teenagers. So I used to always, I do all the laundry in my house just because it's easier just for me to do it. And um, he just makes sure all the clothes are, are by the washer. Um, so I always wash, dried, folded his clothes for him. And the first life hack involved in that is we just leave the laundry in the basement on the table instead of fighting with him to put it away all the time. And then I noticed he doesn't care if his clothes are folded. Like he literally <laughs> could not care less about it. And he would just mess up clothes I folded anyway. So what I start doing is I wash and dry his clothes. He has a basket for socks and underwear, a basket for pants, a basket for shirts, and he just digs through and finds what he needs, and it just saves so much time and aggravation. Just pile it up. That's just pile great. it up. Yeah. All right. So for mine, I've got uh, I've got two life hacks. Uh, one right now, the housing market is just really hot, and uh, and so one thing that I know that some people don't think about, or maybe they do think about, I just never think about whenever I'm house hunting, uh, is to check your cell phone. Uh, while you're there on your on your on that potential new property outside inside see if your cell phone is working you know maybe if you move there maybe you have to change your carrier maybe you don't want to move there at all so uh, that's life hack number one and life hack number two uh, we're still kind of in this uh, spring break season and so uh, one thing I read about was having uh, aloe vera ice cubes boom <laughs> how awesome is that you're super cool like literally so anyway. oh, wow. all right uh well first of all good morning podcast family uh if you're listening on thursday morning if you're hearing us uh later uh good day to you um i don't really have a hack other than i would say um we're always in a hurry in the mornings and so often i will pre-brew some coffee or tea mm -hmm. and make a concentrate, sweeten it, pre-sweeten it, flavor it, whatever. And then you just have to add it half and half with milk. But I made a new one. So any of you who know what chai is and like a dirty chai, which is coffee and chai tea mixed together. So it's not I, chai with like dirty milk. That's correct. <laughs> you can do that if you or want. I don't milk. recommend it. Uh, <laughs> no, what this is, is I, I made a coffee concentrate and I made a chai concentrate and I mix them and sweeten them with honey and then you mix that half and half with milk and it's awesome and you can have it it'll it'll keep for about a week mm -hmm. so you could have that all week long in the morning oh nice and uh, I've actually been drinking it all day today so if I'm a little hyper on the podcast we'll know why <laughs> but uh, no it's really good and I, I guess that's the closest I got to a, a life hack awesome awesome well again we're so thankful everybody uh, who's listening could join us today. And uh, as we mentioned before, we just want to we just want to have a real quick uh, recap, uh, a once over of the event we had on Monday, and uh, so basically, just I'll, I'll give a once over, and then uh, Tom, uh, if you want to kind of help us dive in, sure. Uh, so basically, what happened was as uh, we had a uh, we had Grace at eleven lead us off in some worship. We did four songs with them. Uh, we had four sets of speakers, uh, one about marriage. Uh, another one about finance, another about celebrate recovery. And then Tom, he closed this out uh, by talking about how to guard the summer uh, from a holistic care perspective at the end. Uh, we had a couple more songs, had an altar call, and uh, then our groups went off into their their, their separate uh, classes. So Yeah, that's great. But uh, Tom, do you want to take us a little deeper as we well, dive I'm in? Well, I'm going to deflect to Lori for a minute. I just want to tell all of our listeners that we wouldn't have had an event without Lori. Oh, yes. And so, uh, Lori, I'd love for you to talk a little bit about just what our volunteers did, talk about the food, and, and just kind of the fun prior to uh, the main event starting. 
Well, we actually wouldn't have had such a, a good event without all the volunteers that helped me <laughs> make make the event good. Um, yeah, we we have t- amazing volunteers who who mostly will just pitch in and just do whatever it takes to make things happen. Um, a few of those happened to be my family yesterday, so thank you guys for being there. Um, Callie and I had a huge shopping trip at Sam's. We loaded up. I think three carts full of things, and we um, got some volunteers to to grill some hot dogs. The really good ones that you get at the ballpark, the big they ones that are all beef, and they they were really really <laughs> they were good. good. Yeah, yeah. Um, we had some popcorn and some fun um, red and white popcorn boxes, just you know to make it kind of festive and summery. Um, a freezer full of ice cream and popsicles, um, just some fun summer decorations, and just kind of a relaxed, just kind of feeling and vibe and. Just and it was just great just to see everybody enjoying themselves and pitching in and it, it just was a good time. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah, Tommy. To your to your question about just kind of a little bit deeper, um, you know, the idea was guarding what's important and and originally the name of the event was going to be surviving the summer and mm-hmm. there were several reasons why we renamed it but I think one of the reasons is we we don't want to just survive we want to thrive mm-hmm. and and the way to have your best summer ever is to really. Um, sounds strange, but it's to get out of God's way. I mean, yeah. re- really, if you want to have a great summer, it's uh, God God wants to bless us. He wants to give us a great summer. But the reason we said guarding what's important is with rhythm change in the summer, kids are home instead of at school. There's weddings and there's graduations and there's trips and there's all these things that are great fun. They're important. They're good, but they can throw off uh, even the things that are good for us, reading our scripture, praying, going to church, um, joining in community with other like-minded Christians. Uh, if we're somebody who's in recovery, maybe we're going to less meetings or we're missing some important meetings. Um, maybe we're someone who's still in a, in a process of grieving and we're not talking about what's going on with us because we're, we're busier in a different way. So the event was really about how do we how do we protect that? How do we continue to do the things that are good for us um, even if we have to change sort of the rhythm of things. So yeah. a g- great example would be, let's let's take the, the idea of, of a recovery meeting. Let's say my normal recovery meeting is my Celebrate Recovery on Monday nights at Northside Christian Church. But during the summer, my kids are in a baseball league or some other traveling mm-hmm. kind of league, and I can't get there on Monday nights. Well, I may need to look around for a new Celebrate Recovery and go Wednesday nights instead of Monday. It doesn't mean I don't go to CR all summer. Yeah. So we have we have to guard those things that are important. And then when I when I spoke at the end, I really wanted to encourage people that a lot of times the reason we don't have the best anything, whether it's summer, or fall, whatever, is because we're in the way. And so we talked a little bit last night about how do we allow that sunlight of the spirit? How do we how do we allow God's grace? Because mm-hmm. he's as his children, he's always always just just showering us with his love and his grace, but we can block that or get in the way of that. And so how do we, you know, find that thing that we need to, to surrender to God, to get out of the way so that we can, we can accept the grace that he's already bestowing on us. Yeah. Well, and one thing I really like with uh, Jessica and Brian were talking about yesterday or not yesterday, but Monday um, was uh, the fact that this whole idea we're talking about is, is getting out of God's way and understanding that, look, God has a plan. His plan is good. It's for our good. It's for his glory. And sometimes we have to realign our um, our lives, our priorities, um, and, and realign uh, our thoughts. We need to take our thoughts captive. And, and one of the ways that they talked about was uh, realigning our finances. So oftentimes, uh, you know, we, we look at our net take home and we say, okay, this is what we're going to spend on bills or whatever else we want. And then we have a little bit left over for savings. And then oftentimes it's like, okay, this is what's left over. So we'll go ahead and give this to God. Or, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe it's a little bit, maybe it's 10%, maybe it's more, maybe it's less. But, uh, but one of the classes that they teach is called if money talked. And during that class, they, they, they have a, a segment where it talks about flipping the script. And so what would that look like if we, if we tithe first saved second so that we, you know, we could eventually retire and not be a burden on, on others like our families or, or, or anyone else. And then if we, we spent, uh, the rest of our money on expenses and, and daily things and, and, and monthly things to, to, to try to live within that balance, that mm-hmm. way we're, 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 we're putting God first and we're getting out of God's way. You know, one thing we talked about too, at the event was this idea versus 
uh, where it was God's truth or anything else. And so a lot of times people, you know, honestly, 100% grace, 100% truth, it's, you know, it's either we accept the Bible or we don't. And so the Bible, you take it, you know, I know you've said before, it's, it's not all a cart. It's, you take the whole thing as it is. Right. And, uh, and so we take it <clears throat> holistically, this is the Bible, or if you, if it's anything else, then it's, it's not the Bible as a whole. So we're, we're either taking, this is God's truth, or we're saying, well, this is, this is God's truth for 90% of it, but this is the other 10%. And it's like, well, now we're getting into relativity and we're getting into postmodernism and it just, things start happening that, that just you find yourselves in really awful situations and that can happen during the summer, you know, when, when you're, especially when your, uh, your, your habits and your routines are thrown off. So. Right. I, I like what you said about finances and what they had to say at the event as well. You know, when I think about guarding your finances, um, you know, the, the scripture is clear that we do everything unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so even spending, even going on trips, even having fun, we do unto the Lord. And I think if you're, if you're like me, I like to have fun. I like to have a good time. I celebrate. Sometimes that's going out to eat or it's having a party or something. And it's really easy mm -hmm. to go outside of your budget oh, or yeah. to go beyond your finances. And so the reason we kept coming back to this idea of guarding what's important is if you're on, if you're on a budget, you need to stay on budget even mm -hmm. in the summer. And so that might mean being more creative. Yeah. Um, I, I mentioned last night, you know, maybe you had a big trip to California planned and you look at the budget and you go, can't do a trip to California. Maybe we do a couple weekends to a hotel with a pool in Cincinnati instead I, of going to California. I like when California. you mentioned that. That was really good. Right? Yeah. I mean, I, we've had to do that. We've, we've mm -hmm. gone whole years without a, a, a vacation because that's what you do if your budget doesn't allow it. And God wants you to enjoy life. He loves you. We don't have, we, we, we're the ones that put, oh, I can't have fun unless I go there. I can't have fun unless I spend this much money. And what I try to tell people is rather than seeing spending whatever you want as freedom, real freedom is not being controlled by your finances. And the way yeah. you do that is you bring them under God and you bring your budget under God and you yeah. follow a budget. And now you're free in a way you've never been free before. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, Coming into summer as a single parent, I think sometimes we get wrapped up in wanting to, th there's a lot of mom guilt <laughs> coming, you know, that comes with being a single mom and you want to do all the things for your kids. You want to do the, the vacations and the trips and the amusement parks. And I most years can do none of those things, you know, and I think summer for me is I can't do those things. You know, I'm okay with that. I wasn't always, um, but for summer, for me, in the summer, we can slow down a little bit. We're not rushing to get up early. We're not rushing to school. To school, mm -hmm. we can take time and have, you know, good conversations and do and do fun summer things in the backyard. One of our favorite things to do is have really silly badminton tournaments. But it's it's our time to connect and be close. And um, and even for me, I have I have a really cool uh, screen in front porch that I like to have my coffee in the mornings when the when the weather's nice. And that's that's a summer thing for me that helps me. Um, refreshed and gives me a little more time. To my understanding of badminton tournaments are pretty intense at the. At oh, the absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you, Laura, you made me think of something that that I was taught by a good friend a long time ago, and he used to talk about you know as Christians we are not a superstitious people, and we don't mm -hmm. believe in um, you know we don't have magical thinking, and he'd say, and yet. As people, we often, and this is in air quotes that you can't see listening to this, but we often put spells on things. And I think we put spells on summer. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is we have these expectations of what summer's supposed to be and what it's supposed to feel like and how it's supposed to go. And then that's an expectation. And an expectation that's not met becomes a resentment mm -hmm. and it can become depression. And so, again, kind of back to that idea of getting out of our own way. If you want to create the best summer ever, allow summer to be what it's going to be. Let it unfold. Right. Enjoy it as it comes. Don't put expectations on what it's going to be. It, it is a season. It, is, it can be a very fun season, but it's just a season. Fall's a season. Winter's is right. They all have their own good and bad that come with them. And God's there in every moment. He says he goes before and behind us. Take it as it comes. And I'm not talking about not making plans. I'm talking about not making expectations. Yeah. Right. And I've definitely gotten caught up in that in the past, for sure. Yep. Well, I mean, e even like recently, you know, kind of on the, on the topic of finance, uh, I mean, our, our kids are getting excited because they're outside more. They're, 
uh, we have this like swing on this tree that's not really a great swing, but it, it, it's <laughs> our swing and, and it, it, it works. But And they're all excited about that. But then they're like, well, dad, we really need to buy this. Or we need really need to buy that. I'm like, uh, that's not in the budget. And they're like, well, wh- what do you mean? We could just get it on Amazon and be here in two days. I'm like, yeah, we could, but uh, <laughs> it's not in our budget. And so we don't need that. Like what happened to one day ago when you were excited to get outside and Shorts and flip flops. Right. Yeah. You know, right. So, yep. But. No, and that's we do that as adults too. Yeah. I mean, it's not just a kid thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I appreciated you and Jill talking about guarding marriage. And, you know, one of the things I was thinking about, and I'm sure Jessica is listening to this and gonna hold me to this, but but you know, if, if you do have different rhythms and time, it's a great time to go on more dates with your spouse. Oh yeah. You know, marriage is important. Our marriages are important. We're guarding our marriage. And you know, speaking of guarding, it's very easy to make, if you have children, it's very easy to make children sort of the center of your time, yep. especially in the summer when they're around more. And I'm not saying don't spend time with your kids, but I'm saying don't don't um, neglect your spouse because yep. you're spending more time with your kids. Yep. And so that's sort of, again, along the lines of why we pick that theme, that we these are things in our life that in the long run are what we need to be feeding into and building. And summer is just, an, you know, shouldn't change that. In fact, maybe even more so to be careful that we don't stop doing what's healthy in our marriages, in our finance, in our recovery. Um, and when we say recovery, folks, we're talking about anybody with a hurt habit or hang up they're dealing with. So I hope as you're listening and you go, oh, I'm, I don't have a drug problem. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about any struggle that you have in your life that God is helping you work on that you know you need to surrender that you need to let it could be biting your nails could be a pattern of thinking could be overeating it could be a lot of things so when when we use that word recovery i hope you'll apply that loosely to whatever hurt habit or hang up you're struggling with yeah well and one thing you know i've uh going back to the the idea of truth it's like one of the best ways to guard um your summer to to create the best summer is to is to to land on to embrace and to seek out and to align uh, your thoughts with truth, absolute truth, and that's the Bible. And so, and to not, and to lean not on your own understanding. And so, uh, so a way we can do that is to is to to follow Jesus, follow His lead. And yep. so, that was one of the things we talked about last night with marriage. And so, uh, you know, when I was talking to husbands last night, uh, I love this in Ephesians five twenty five. Husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave Himself up for her. And so, it, like, it's saying husbands go love your wives. So, yeah, as a husband, we need to go love our wives. But I love this as it, you know, and it says this a couple times here in this passage. You know, it refers back to Christ and the church, and it's saying that Christ loved the church. So that, are, that, that, that's, that's something that's already happened. That's something that's happening. And he gave himself up for her. And so because Christ did that, and Christ says, follow me, husbands, go love your wives, because I'm saying follow me. So that that's what you need to do to follow me. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's one good. of the best ways to, to guard your marriage. So that's good. I know um, one of the things I shared is um, Proverbs tells us that above all else to guard our hearts. Mm-hmm. And God just kind of put it on my heart to share that with the the uh, folks on Monday that uh, you know the language of the heart is is love mm-hmm. and God is love. And the reason we guard our heart is because above all else, we have to guard our relationship with God. And even even in the passage you were just reading, Tom, you know, I, I think of Jesus tells us he is the way, the truth, and the life. And you're absolutely right about aligning ourselves with truth. We're aligning ourselves with Jesus. You can't go wrong leaning into Jesus, getting to know him more. Uh, I think it's Nate who says it's it's proximity, mm-hmm. right? It's proximity to Jesus that's the importance yeah. and, and making sure that we're close to him at all times. But... Uh, yeah, I I, um, I think back to that grace piece for me, it's huge. God's been doing a lot in my life and in my heart about grace, and he kind of gave me a cool, I think, trying to understand what grace is. Sometimes um, over the years, even growing up, I didn't always understand what it meant to, to talk about God's grace. Mm-hmm. Recently, been doing a lot of reading. There's a lot of association in Scripture and with grace and power. That, that God says my grace is sufficient. You can you can accomplish all things through my grace. And I thought, okay, so that, that has to be associated with power. But I think that's not enough. And so I think grace is that intersection between God's love and God's power. Mm-hmm. That when we're talking about allowing grace into our lives, what we're really saying is if you want to experience God's love and you want to be able to accomplish anything in your life, right, because in God 
all things are possible with Mm -hmm. him, without him, nothing's possible, then we need more of God's grace. And so as you're trying to break that down, what am I really trying to allow into my life? Well, you're trying to allow more of God's love and more of God's power in your life so that you can do the things that without him you're unable to do. And yeah. and if and if you want to have a great summer, you want to create a great summer, seek out God's grace. Yep. Well, and and one thing too I I love is that uh when we think about, you know, when Jesus, you know, was asked, you know, what are the greatest commandments? And I uh, you know, he talked about he said you know, love God and then love your neighbor. And so, you know, there's, and it's very much in that order too. It's like, you know, seeking out God and God, you know, do love, love God first. Like there was an, there was a reason why he, uh, why he said it like that, because and if you, if you really unpack it some more, you can see that, that that's, I think it's the first four commandments. And then the second one, love your neighbor is really the se- the, the, the six through 10 commandments. Mm-hmm. And so, so that, that, that's one of the best things you can do to, to, to guard your summer, to create the best summer ever is to love God first. And to, you know, I, I you, you had mentioned something on Monday about, uh, I can't write out what it was, but it was something to the effect of basically just that, like, you know, don't get caught up in uh, idolizing these other things in the summer. Don't get caught up in, in, in feeling like you have to meet all these objectives. No, uh, start with loving God, love God, mm-hmm. and then love your neighbors. Yeah. And so your neighbors, you know, at, it doesn't mean like, you know, now now go to your neighbor down the street or, or down the road. Rather, uh, start with your nearest neighbors, and that that's your spouse, and then your kids, and then your Amen. and then your your family, Amen. you know, your extended family and the people, you know, to your left and your right on your street. But that's but good. to do that first and that'll help guard your your summer and also help you create the best summer yeah. ever. I know we're I know we're getting a little short on time, and I Lori, uh, I would love for you to talk about the next event that we have coming up and kind of why we're doing that. But before that, I promised somebody I'd give them a shout out, and I just I want to say a couple things to the listeners that we we are honored. Uh, we just so you guys know, you're a growing number. Uh, Tommy informs us we're at about 1,100 listeners at this point, which is just uh, a blessing from the Lord. We started with about 25 on our first podcast. <laughs> yeah. um, we're increasing our, our ranks all the time. And I called my brother in law up, he didn't know we were doing a podcast, and I sent him the link. And I said, we really need some listeners on the West Coast. And so uh, Ryan told me that if I wanted listeners on the West Coast, I needed to name him personally. (laughs) So Ryan Hogan, I'm saying your name right now. And then he said, I have to give a shout out to his dog, Rocky, as well. So Rocky and Ryan are listening in California. And uh, but we're we're just like I said, we're humbled and we're excited to have uh, more listeners all the time. And um, Lori, if you would also share with our listeners, we really want to start being able to answer some questions. So mm-hmm. if you listen to a podcast and you're interested in a topic and you have a question, we'd love for you to email in questions. Tommy and I will be doing a little segment that we're going to kind of uh, put a separate link to that will be an answer to some of the questions that come in. And um, so, Lori, if you could share with the listeners first, maybe that email where they could email questions and then tell us a little bit about uh, our next event. Okay. Uh, the email address that we have set up is Northside Care Ministry at gmail.com. We monitor that every day. We'll, you know, get back to you or answer your question on the air. Um, we'd love to hear from you there. Um, the next care event we have coming up is on a Sunday afternoon. It's May 2nd. It's a week from Sunday at 2 o'clock. Um, we have registration on our care page, um, mynorthside.com slash care. There's a, a graphic right at the top. Click that. It'll take you to registration. Um, there's no cost associated, but along with the registration, there's a place to ask a question. And the question will go to the a panel of speakers that we'll have there. Uh, we'll have, I believe we'll have a teacher, a doctor, um, hopefully someone from the finance community, a pastor, a clinician. Did you say teacher already? I I think I did. (laughs) So just a wide variety of professionals to answer questions that you might, questions, concerns you have about uh, a COVID. We also, at the end of the the panel, we'll have a question and answer session. And then we'll also have a COVID vaccination clinic that we'll have set up. And obviously it's free. And um, so we're really excited about that. Yep. Well, as we get a wrap up today, uh, we always want to remember that prayer is primary. And so, uh, so I'm just going to pray us out real quick, if that's okay. Yeah, that'd be great. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, Father, we just thank you for today, God. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for uh, for sending Christ to die for us, God. We thank you for, for meeting us right where we are. 
and <laughs> in, in all the muck and the mire that we create uh, because we're not aligned with you. Uh, God, we just thank you so much for, for blessing this time. God, we pray that you bless our listeners. God, I just pray that you, you bless them in ways that are deeper than what we can dream, uh, wilder than what we can imagine, uh, right where they are, God. God, I pray that they uh, have a relationship with you and that they accept you as their Lord and their Savior and their King. Uh, God, I pray that uh, you bless us as we go forward, uh, as we go into the summer. Uh, God, we just pray that, that we create the best summer and guard uh, guard uh, our lives and our families and our, ourselves uh, in a way that aligns with your will and your will only, in a way that brings glory to you and to only to you and to nothing else. And God, we just pray that in everything we do, we take the name of Jesus and we lift it as high as we can, as often as we can. And it's in Christ's beautiful name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Well, thanks for listening th- uh, this week. And don't forget, you can catch this episode or others at 7 a.m. on Thursday mornings on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, and Amazon Music. And you can also go to mynorshow.com slash care for additional resources. We love you guys, and we'll catch you next week.